Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today we're going to continue talking about the history of tea.、Uh-huh. Again, the title of our article is "Tea: How One Humble Drink Changed the World." We're going to tell you how this very basic, simple drink went on to conquer the world. <laughs> And last time, let's see, we talked about the legend of tea. What was it all about, Shen Nong or something? Yeah, there's a legend that this Shen Nong, the god of agriculture, is responsible for having discovered tea. His servants were boiling some water and leaves from that Camellia sinensis tree, which is the name, the scientific name of the tea tree. They just fell into the pot, and lo and behold, doo doo, trumpets, da 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 da. Tea was invented. Because it let out this really wonderful smell, and they thought, "What is this? Let's try it." And that's how tea was supposedly born. We're going to continue talking about the impact that tea has had on the world. I know it had a big impact on America when we were fighting the British for our freedom. It was just used as a sign of rebellion. To dump all that British tea into the ocean in Boston Harbor. We'll talk about that and more. But first, as we always do, we're going to read through today's lesson. By the 18th century, tea was one of the world's most profitable commodities. So much so that it may be the most historically important beverage of all time. For example. It became a symbol of rebellion in 1773 for Boston colonists in the U.S. when the British imposed the Tea Act, taxing the beverage. Frustrated that they were being taxed by a governing body in which they had no representation, the colonists dumped 342 boxes of imported tea into Boston Harbor. The political protest. Known as the Boston Tea Party, famously sparked the American War of Independence. Less than a century later, tea played a central role in another war, this time between the UK and China. In the early 1800s, the UK was trading silver for tea and other goods from China. To ensure it didn't run out of the precious metal. The UK also began smuggling Indian opium into China illegally, demanding silver as payment. The cycle continued. Opium sales to China were funding the tea trade completely, and fueling an addiction crisis in the meantime. Hoping to stop the opium trade, China entered into war with the UK in 1839. However, Booming tea sales in the European country helped it fund its military. At the same time, British spies, who had initially sought to learn Chinese practices of growing and harvesting tea, began collecting military secrets instead. Both these secrets and the increased funding contributed to the UK's eventual victory. Considering its historic influence. It's easy to see how tea has changed the world. Next time you're enjoying a cup of tea, take a minute to think back on its exciting history. Okay, everybody, let's talk about the contents of today's lesson. Again, we're talking about tea, the humble drink that changed the world. So, where we left off last time, we were talking about the different words for tea:、uh-huh. uh, cha if it comes overland via the Silk Road, and de or te if it comes over the ocean、uh, sent、uh-huh. by the Dutch. So, by the 18th century, which would be the 1700s, tea was one of the world's most profitable commodities. Profitable means you can make a profit from it; it's very lucrative. Remember, we learned that word last time. It's、uh, something that、uh, can make you really rich, really fast. And a commodity, of course, is something that is bought and sold on the market, like tea, coffee, oil, minerals, precious stones, etc. Those are all commodities. That's right. They're usually referred to as commodities if they're unprocessed, so they haven't gone through the factories yet. 
In fact, if you invest in the stock market, you can invest in commodities like copper, silver, things like that, even food like grains. You know, wheat, for example. It also gives us a good look into the future of the financial health of a company to see what those commodities are selling for. I know my dad used to invest in copper when I was a kid, and so I always would hear price of copper was oil and gas as a commodity. So you can make some money if your price is higher than what you bought it for. That's the profit, right? Indeed. So we all want to be dealing with something that brings us some money and that it's profitable. So it's really, though, quite important historically. We're going to talk about a couple of situations where tea played a major role in history, which is kind of funny because it's just a beverage; it's just a drink. But it became. Well, they say the same thing about Coke too, and、true. that makes millions of dollars too.、Yeah. Just a fizzy brown drink. I know. So yeah, tea here, of course, is、uh, well, at least was one of the world's most profitable commodities, and it was so much a profitable commodity that lots of people think it may be the most important beverage of all time, <laughs> top-selling beverage throughout history. Wow. Now, for example, here it became a symbol of rebellion. Back in 1773, for Boston colonists in the U.S., when the British imposed the Tea Act, taxing the beverage. Okay, so now we're talking a little bit about the history of tea in America. Remember, the colonists were the people from England who were settling in North America there,、mm-hmm. and they set up all those different colonies, like Massachusetts and Pennsylvania and Virginia, etc. Those were all colonies. Of Britain, yeah, but they were still British citizens. They were just living abroad. There was no United States of America back then. They belonged to England. They were citizens of that country. Well, what happened is the British in England decided, hey, yeah, we'll sell you tea. We'll send tea over the Atlantic Ocean, and you guys can drink it. But we're going to tax it too. You're going to have to pay taxes on it. And of course, the Boston colonists said, "Hey, no fair. We don't get to vote on anything. We don't get to choose our leaders. You can't tax us because we don't have anyone in the governing body. That's the legislature, you guys, or as they call it in England, is called the Parliament. We don't have any say in that. We don't get to decide who our leaders are. So they were really upset about being taxed and not having a voice in the government. So." They're saying here we had no representation. If you have representation, guys, it just means you select somebody, usually through voting, a voting process, an election, and that person goes to the legislature and represents that community's wishes or desires. So they didn't have any representation back in England, so they got mad. What did they do, Tom? Well, they dumped all that tea into Boston Harbor, so indeed it was an act of rebellion.、Oh. The colonists in Boston there dumped 342 boxes of imported tea into Boston Harbor. So that was an act of rebellion. I guess if they're saying that, hey, if you want to charge us tax on this tea, we're just going to dump it into Boston Harbor. Take that. What are you guys going to do about that? Can't sell tea after it's been in the ocean. Oh, I didn't mention this word "impose." To impose、mm. just means you have passed a law that now has to be followed by people to impose the T Act. To impose it, it's more. I was going to say it's a more gaudy. <laughs> it's a harder, I think, word that we don't always hear, but we do use it when we're talking about imposing laws, you know, on the people in some country that they then have to obey. So you can impose something on people. You have the authority to force them to accept it. You don't have the right to say, "I don't like that particular law. I don't think I'll keep it." If that law is imposed on you, you must obey. Right. They imposed this T Act on us, this T tax, and we don't have representatives in Parliament back in England. So we're going to get you guys back for that. We're、yeah. going to dump all this T. Into Boston Harbor. Then you won't sell any. You won't make any money off of it. Ha, yeah, ha, that was ha. all about、uh, taxation without representation, and of course, that was the famous Boston Tea Party, as it says in the next sentence. The political protest known as the Boston Tea Party famously sparked the American War 
of independence. So it wasn't actually a party; they were dumping the tea there. And here we've got the word "spark" as a verb that just means to trigger something, to start something to happen, to initiate something. There's something that gets something going when you're building a fire, guys. You need that spark. You know that little bit of fire, that flame that gets the bigger fire going to spark. But we use it a lot when we're talking about something that helps something get started. Especially, you could have maybe a great idea that was sparked through watching a particular TV show or reading a book. Something that gave you some inspiration. We use it that way as as well. But sparkle is something that's very flashy, has a lot of glitter to it. A lot of girls like. Sparkly makeup or sparkles on their shoes, but here it just means to initiate or get something started. That's right, to spark. I could say, for example, the extradition law in Hong Kong sparked massive protests in Hong Kong. Yeah, I hope I can、uh, use that sentence here. It's not too politically sensitive, but in any case, you know that brings us about to the halfway point、cool. in today's lesson. So let's take a break right now and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. We're today 要继续来看茶的历史。在历史上呢，其实，在西元十八世纪的时候，茶真的是非常赚钱的商品，以至于说它其实还造成了在历史上呢有很大的影响。看到这边说到了 so much so that， 我们比较习惯讲一个因果关系的时候。通常就是 so blah 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 that blah blah blah. 可是有一个比较正式的说法 so much so that 这个其实我们把它当做偏语来背，它的意思也是一样的。它就是要谈一个因果的关系，以至于怎么样？它其实在历史上真的造成很大的影响。我们就先从第一个一七七三年，当时呢。英国呢，它是殖民美国的，而它在这边推行了一个 The Tea Act， 也就是说，如果你有茶运送进来，这边都要抽水。所以当时美国 Boston 这个地方，等于是英国的殖民地，他们的居民就起来反叛。所以在当时，它可以说是一个 symbol of rebellion。那我们继续来看当时的居民。他们心理上是 very frustrated， 所以我们就从这个字 frustrated 看起，非常的有挫折感，感到灰心。这其实是一个过去分词，因为你要想想，英国他们扣税，可是他们根本殖民地的居民在英国政府里面是没有声音的，没有任何代表权利的，所以 frustrated 这个过去分词。用过去分词来引导这个分词片语，而它真正的主词是在后半句的 the colonists。这些殖民地的居民非常的灰心，而且他们当时做的什么事？把三百四十二箱的进口茶叶都倒到波士顿港去。而这一次的政治上的抗议，称为波士顿茶党事件，这也是在历史课本里面所提到的。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We shall now continue with today's lesson. We're talking about the history of tea、uh-huh. and something that involved tea. Was an event in American history called the Boston Tea Party. Again, they dumped a bunch of tea in Boston Harbor to protest the tea tax that the British were imposing on colonists in North America. There. So let's go on here and talk about some other events from history. Less than a century later, you know, less than 100 years later, tea played a central role in another war. This time between the UK and China. Remember, between England and China. The all too infamous Opium War. At least I think there were two of them at different times. Oh, look at who's involved once again. Those British people. You know, back in history, the UK had a lot of power. You know, they had a great、mm-hmm. army, a great navy. They conquered a lot of different, you know, places around the world. 
they were、uh, at their heyday. They were at their peak in power. But、uh, yeah, they played a central role in a horrible war between the two countries, UK and China. I hate this because what it involves is getting people hooked on drugs. I hate this stuff.、Mm. So in the early 1800s. You know, not the end of the 1800s, early 1800s. The UK was trading silver for tea and other cool goods from China. Remember, China discovered some things that the Western world didn't have yet. So there were a lot of cool things coming from China that got people in Europe quite excited. So they wanted the tea, and there were other goods or products that the Chinese produced that they wanted. And so they would take their silver and then do a trade. To ensure or make sure it didn't run out of the precious metal, you don't want to run out of silver or gold, for that matter. The UK also began doing something horrible. They were smuggling Indian opium into China illegally. So at that point in history, and it's still true today, you can't just you know become a drug trader. You know it's illegal drugs. You can't do it. So to smuggle means you hide the product. And then you take it into a country without them finding out you have it. Exactly. So basically, what was happening? The tea was something the English wanted. So hey, China, we want your tea. And China said, "Well, what will you trade us for it? Well, we'll give you some silver." Okay. So England was giving China silver for China's tea, but England was afraid they were going to run out of silver.、Yeah. So they thought, "Hey, there's a way we can get it back. Let's use drugs, huh? Yeah, let's、uh, get them all addicted to opium, and then the Chinese will have no choice but to pay us the silver back." So again, they smuggled the opium, yapian opium, into、mm-hmm. China, but they did that illegally, of course, and they demanded silver as payment. No, we won't take tea for payment. We won't take copper. We won't take bronze or anything. You got to give us silver for this opium. And I guess at that point,、uh, lots of people in China were addicted to opium, so the Chinese had no choice but to give in and give them the silver for the opium. But again, it was illegal. Yeah, you might look up opium dens, D E N. It was a tough time in history. I hate to see those photos, actually, of people just so addicted to opium. You know, they wasted their lives on it. Drugs are bad, guys. Okay, so here is China. Having to deal with these smugglers, and of course, as Tom said, the UK was then saying, "Hey, we'll give you the opium. We'll sell you the opium illegally, but we want silver back as a payment." If you use the verb to demand, guys, you're not asking politely. You're asking with some authority, or maybe you're giving someone no option. They don't get to choose. You demand. I demand this happen. Sometimes people are quite angry if they demand something. Maybe you've been—I don't know. Let's use an example. You go to a restaurant and the service is horrible, and you demand to see the manager. You want to talk to the manager. The waiter or waitress isn't going to go. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, they usually say yes, yes, yes. I'll go get the manager. So it's something that is quite forceful in tone when you say demand. Exactly. So basically, you could say that the long and short of it was that、uh, they were trading opium、mm-hmm. for tea. Forget about the silver there, but、uh, opium sales to China were funding the tea trade completely and fueling an addiction crisis.、Wow. In the meantime,、mm-hmm. so here to fund something as a verb just means to provide the money for something. So again, opium was basically used to pay for the tea that was being shipped off to England. So they could have their little afternoon tea parties and stuff like that. <laughs> Never mind all the damage it was doing to Chinese society. So again, funding the tea trade, paying for the tea trade, financing it—you could also say—and、uh-huh. also fueling an addiction crisis. To fuel means to provide fuel for something so that it can burn. Here, fuel is being used as a verb to basically provide the energy for something. As a noun, fuel could refer to something that is burned for power. Like gasoline or coal. Yeah, but it doesn't have to actually be some sort of oil or gas or coal. Um, you could say somebody's fueling a fight between two people by taking sides. So it's just something that makes the situation even worse. You know, they're fueling something. They're adding something that keeps something going. So you can't resolve it sometimes. So yeah, it can be used as a noun or a verb to fuel something. 
to give something the food or the energy or, or the、uh, I don't know the support for something that's happening to fuel an addiction crisis. So there were too many people addicted to this awful opium. So it was really hurting China. Hoping to stop the opium trade, China entered into war with the UK in 1839. They thought we're not going to put up with this. We're going to war. Going to beat you. See,、so、you have to get out of our country and stop interfering and making things worse. You can see that、uh, we haven't made a lot of progress with the illegal drugs, though. Still goes around. Yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, this happened during the Qing Dynasty. That's when China was weak、yeah. and England was strong.、Mm -hmm. It's、uh, the opposite now. The British would not dare try to do something like that now. But in any case, here China said, "We're going to go to war with you." But、uh, unfortunately, here, however, booming tea sales in the European country of England helped it fund its military, so they could sell lots of tea there and use the money to buy weapons. So it was pretty easy for the English to fight against the Chinese at that time. Yeah. At the same time, ooh, this is the fun part. We had British spies. Yeah, like Double O Seven. He's a spy. So British spies who had initially, or at first, sought to learn Chinese practices of growing and harvesting tea, instead of focusing on the tea, which was, you know, very lucrative for them. Which is an interesting thing for a spy to focus on. Anyway, usually it has more to do with military and government secrets. Well, they started collecting military secrets instead. So both these secrets and the increased funding contributed to the UK's eventual victory. So how did the UK win? Well, they had spies over there that were getting secrets about what was happening with the Chinese military, and they also had a lot more money to fight that war. And remember, tea was very much involved in all of this. That's why、yeah. we're talking about this. It、uh -huh. involves the history of tea. So, considering its historic influence, it's easy to see how tea. Has changed the world. So tea has been at the center of lots of moments in history. The Boston Tea Party, the controversies, War,、yeah. uh, indeed. So、oh. next time you're enjoying a cup of tea, take a minute to think back on its exciting history. And there's probably other things to talk about regarding tea as well, like、uh, how it became famous or popular in other countries in the world, and the different kinds of teas that are available、mm. in different parts of the world. I know the Middle East has a tea that I like called、uh, mint tea. I'm not sure if you just add mint leaves to a traditional cup of tea,、so. or if you just use the mint itself. I'm not quite sure, but I find that quite tasty. Usually, just the leaves from the mint plant. Okay. As far as I know, because I do buy peppermint tea, chamomile tea. It's good for your digestion. So yeah, there's a lot behind tea. If you have some time, all you have to do is get on the internet, check it out, and in the meantime. Learn some of these words. They're great words for you guys. For sure, you're going to be needing them, especially if you have plans to use your English in the future for a career. And if you go overseas to study in foreign countries, take、yeah. some tea along. They make great gifts、True. for your host families and stuff like that. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. We continue to look at tea as a cause of influence in history. The Chinese Opium War. 其实前面这个事件是在十八世纪，而谈鸦片战争，它是在 the early 1800s。当时呢，我们知道英国他想用白银跟中国买茶叶，可是他付给中国白银之后，他又不想把这种这么重要的金属就拱手给了中国，所以他用了一个方法，也就是卖鸦片，把印度的鸦片走私到中国。这样子一来，他要中国用白银付给他，等于是一手交白银给你，一手又把白银拿回来。我们来看这些做法，当然这是历史的故事。而我们要注意到的，先看文章里面文法的地方，要注意到这边有一个 demanding demanding silver as payment。我们知道 silver 当然指的是白银，而 demanding 这个 i n g。当然，我们要看到它其实就是一个分词。这个现在分词跟前面这句中间，如果你把它加一个连接词 ，and demanded， 这样子的话，也是另外一种写法。在结构上
你把连接词去掉，就要把这个动作改成粉词，而这里是主动语态，所以 v i n g 要求中国用白银来付款。我们也知道，英国走私鸦片到中国，然后呢，这种销售法就是为他的茶叶贸易提供基金。我们看到这个字 fund fund。本来是名词，这里是当做动词，意思就是提供资助，拿出钱来作为他的基金。面对这种鸦片贸易，中国当然是受不了的，所以在一八三九年对英国开战。我们看这个片语 ，China entered into war with the UK。注意到 enter 这个动词，本来 enter 当做进入一个场地，你只要。用 enter 在家那个地点就好，不过要注意到这边不太一样哦，因为 enter 如果还加了 into， 后面所接的就表示，比如说 enter into negotiations， 意思就是 start negotiations， 也就是开始协商。所以这个 enter into war 这个地方加了 into， 也就是表示他开始宣战，对英国开战。那我们再看下面，这当然都是历史故事了。不过呢，最有趣的也就是当时呢，其实英国有间谍，他们来中国这里学种植跟采收茶叶，同时呢，他还收集军情。这样子一来，就变成了英国最后打败了中国。所以鸦片战争，中国的失败原来就是如此。最后这段就要谈茶，真的在历史影响很大。这边有一个句型 ，considering its historic influence。consider 这个动词加了 ing， 像在这里你可以把它当做是一个介系词哦，意思就是把什么列入考虑，想到这一点，那想到它在历史上的影响，其实可以看出茶真的改变了世界。好，我们今天讲解就到这边结束，我们下次见。That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, and please join us again next time over a cup of tea. It will make the show so much more enjoyable. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.